We are finally on the extended techniques. I'll start with some of the more common techniques that you'll see in music, and we'll branch out from there to the stuff you'll never see in music, but you might want to do. So it's important to note that the purpose of all of these are to produce an effect. If you find a different way to produce the same effect, and it's productive and <laughs> works, then it's completely valid. There's no set way of doing any of these, but I'll take you through the ways I personally do them. Okay, so first we'll do a growl. There are two ways that I know of how to do a growl. One is to actually say something like grrr in your throat. <sighs> it's something like that. It sounds really ridiculous when I do it out loud uh, by myself in this room. Uh, and you do that while you play. And the other is to roll your tongue. That's the one I, I typically do. a growl. Next we have lip trills and lip trills are rapidly switching between two notes using mostly your tongue. I'm able to get them by saying ooey 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 with my tongue. So. Now that one you can practice by switching between the notes slower and then speeding it up. There's an Arbin study that does it with quarter notes, eighth notes, then you do triplets, and sixteenth notes, and eventually you get there. There's another way that I've heard of where you set your lips on the note in between the notes. So that was an F and a G, so I would set my lips on an F sharp. And it kind of does it for you, because you're set right in between, and all you have to do is move your tongue a little bit, and you'll go to the higher one, and you'll go to the lower one, but you have to keep your lips set on that F sharp. So that's the lip trill. Not entirely an extended technique, but you start getting to the larger intervals, and it gets a little crazier. And that just takes being able to pick one note, and pick the next and switch between them. And that's less of a uh, rapid tongue movement and more of a rapid, complete embouchure movement. So from D to D. I'm literally chewing that note to get down and up. A fast double tongue or a doodle tongue are ways to get around the range of the instrument very quickly. A fast double tongue is the taka taka ta, but it's much, much lighter. And the doodle tongue is doodle 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 is the way I do it. Some people actually say doodle 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 doodle. So this is the uh, fast double tongue first. that is your big notes. So if the phrase is going up and then down, you want to hit the first one, get to the top one, and get to the next one. And that really creates the phrase for you without you having to get every single note way out there. Again, this is extended technique. This is not double tonguing. And the doodle tongue um, is a longer version of that one. You can see it's a little bit more connected. All right, now multiphonics. Um, it's when you play more than one note at the same time. Some people are able to actually produce um, a controlled double buzz on the mouthpiece alone, but more commonly, and what I do, is you sing one note and play the other. And if you want to take it a step further, if you play the root of chord, sing the third of a chord, the overtone series will actually come out. So oddly desired extreme registers. So let's start with low. Uh, the point is to open up your embouchure in order to make a very slow frequency. Remember, uh, there are no rules with extended techniques, so whatever you have to do to accomplish this is allowed. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure the low B is as far down as you can go without people not being able to hear it. So now we go up, and you've all been waiting for it. So, starting on high F, I change my embouchure to what I call the high embouchure. 
I roll my bottom lip in and I shoot my airstream as far downward as I can. So picture yourself hitting the ground with your air. I use a fair amount of pressure, but not too much because you still need your lips to vibrate and it doesn't hurt when I do it, but there's enough pressure to keep it firm all the way across as I roll my lip in. So check it out. These notes can be played as loud as the rest of your range uh, with this technique. And you can control them pretty well. You're not gonna be able to get around as much, but if you want to hit one of those at the end of a piece or at a high point, you're gonna be able to, to nail out a B flat. It's not a note that's forbidden. It can happen, but it is an extended technique. You can pick it out of the air, it's okay. You just have to not be scared of it and not hurt yourself. If you set yourself up and close off your throat, it's not gonna come out and you're gonna get frustrated. You have to open up, be confident that it's gonna come out, and then try. Now once we get to the B flat and up, these are notes that aren't going to be as loud as the rest of your range. And I switched to what I call the stratospheric embouchure. Now let me explain it to you a little bit, but it's more of how it feels than the way I can explain it in words. But basically my airstream was going down as far as I could go, so there's nowhere to go to get higher than that B flat, or sometimes I can get the C. So what I do is hit my airstream on my bottom lip, which is rolled in now completely, and the airstream will hit the top of the mouthpiece first. So see if you can do that. See if you can hit the airstream on your lip first and then have the airstream actually come up. And it's pretty crazy how it, how it works. Um, you should be able to feel a little bit up here. It's still going down mostly, but there's a little bit going up. What you're gonna hear is probably an octave, really soft, and then an octave above, louder. It, it's not going to be loud, but it's going to be louder, and that's the note that you're gonna hear. If you're in a microphone, it's a completely valid note. So let's start with that B flat and go up to see if we can get an F. So from the B flat up, it it's definitely not the same technique, and it's definitely more of a squeak, <laughs> but you can put some air behind it, and then it starts to turn into real notes. We got an F, but what's really cool is from that F to the C even, you can really get a really loud pitch to come out. So let's try for the C. And there is your high C, and Hopefully you're trying this and hopefully you're not hurting yourself. So there you go. There's your tutorial on how to hit that high C. So check out the rest of the lesson series. I'll post all of the links in the description below and hopefully you'll learn a thing or two. Christopher Bill, he sailed the sea, and Annabelle was his daughter, but never a soul did Christopher tell, he never did like the water.